My name is Ratsuni and welcome back to Curse of the Dead Gods. A uh, quick reminder at the top of this video that this series is sponsored by Focus Home Interactive. Uh, thank you to Focus Home Interactive for having done so. You can buy the game with its recent update, The Serpent Temple, linked in the description down below at the very top. It is 20% off on Steam until July 9th. I also forgot to mention in the first episode for this series, because I honestly just forgot, this series is recorded during the early access phase of the game's development, and as such, is not necessarily reflective of the game's final polish, content, or balance. I kinda just forgot it was in early access, yo. Alright. Do I have... Yes, I do have an extra slot here, but I do not have enough skulls, crystal skulls, to actually be unlocking anything for that, so instead we're gonna be diving right back in to the Serpent Temple, having just unlocked medium explorations. So if the short exploration is a full kind of area and then ends in a champion, the medium exploration is two of those. An area, a champion, and then another area and another champion. Which actually does mean uh, a kind of fundamental rethinking of the kinds of things that we want. Obviously, like, gold gain, getting gold gain relatively early was necessary if you're going to go for any gold gain if you're only going for one floor but if you're going for two floors then gold gain is a much more viable stat to get much more late that is one of the most obvious examples uh, that comes to mind all right i really like the idea of taking this path over on the right getting money for four different rooms and then getting a weapon and two stats before the first champion let's go for it so I'm imagining that the champion is going to be the same as the champion that we fought, that is the first champion, is going to be the same as the first champion that we fought last time. Uh, so that is a ranged skull attack, corruption attack, uh, lays down landmines, those kinds of things. So we might want to base the weaponry that we prioritize taking on what would counter that enemy. We saw that a very, ooh, managing stamina in combat, kill an enemy to instantly recover a stamina. Okay, and there's also dodge an enemy attack at the last second to perfectly trigger a perfect dodge and recover a stamina, uh, stamina rather. Let's go into battle and demonstrate those then. Uh, I know this room. There's a trap right there, isn't there? No, wait, there's not? Okay, never mind, I don't know this room. Not even slightly. Come on. Ah, dang it. That's what I get for trying to parry. <laughs> Too early there. Uh-oh. Okay, so the trap is directly in the center of the room. Just stay away from that. Ah, again. <laughs> uh, I'm taking all this extra damage right now because I'm trying to get into the habit of actually parrying my enemies. Because it'll make us way better at combat to actually utilize that. Plus three to perception. Perception is gold fine, so if I'm going to get that at any time, I want to get it early. Although it's not exclusively gold find. Like, if I get an item that says, you know, plus one percent to base damage per point of perception, well then, it's not just gold find, it's also damage. Also, thank you to those of you in the first video who told me that the poison is actually flammable. You can use that in order to not only trigger an explosion, but also to get through poisonous areas without having to take damage. I was kind of just resigned to having to take damage anytime I encountered poison, so... Really something that I probably should have thought about or checked, but... I appreciate I have you all around to correct me when those kinds of things don't necessarily occur to me. Uh, poison down here. Come on. Hey! Oh, come on! I thought I had the parry! <laughs> I've still got to try for it, at least until I get a couple of them off, right? Uh, take the money. Alright. Uh, 848. Yeah, that's not enough for a really good relic, so I'll jump out of here. I'm kind of okay taking early damage as long as I don't take, uh, as long as I don't take early corruption. I'm happy about it. There we go. 
That's a parry right there. Thank heck, the green timers are extended. Nope. Gotta get some stamina back so I can re-up that green timer. Okay, those little bugs, the little poison bugs, actually attack way faster than I'm giving them credit for. They wind up and then basically the attack comes out instantly. There we go. Okay, so you could see there that was a perfect roll. We rolled away and got a stamina, and you can see the counter in the top left increased. Demonstrating that, yes, it's a perfect roll. It's not just me patting myself on the back, that's the technical name for it. <laughs> I love the little uh, skeleton with its head crushed. Nice little environmental touch right there. All right. Ah, there we go. This is the trap room. No, no, no. Get him. <laughs> yeah. It's exactly what I was kind of aiming for. Just trying to get them actually hit by the trap there. Okay, another perfect dodge. All right. Thought it was going to trigger the trap there, but unfortunately it was just a bit far away. All right. Uh, ooh, free relic that I missed. Plus 20% base damage for shields. Okay. I might find and wield a shield. Crazier things have happened. They're not usually my uh, weapon of choice. Well, never mind. They're not usually my weapon of choice, but they are definitely better than the default weapon. Has a fire attack, plus I have plus 20% da uh, base damage to it. It's actually probably better than my main weapon right now. Okay, plus 20% base damage for claws. Okay, now all I need is a claw that says plus 20% base damage if your secondary weapon is a shield. And that happens, not infrequently. We could get a really, really good choice up here at the weapon shop. Weapon area? Weapon room. Still haven't really settled on how I'm going to be referring to those. No! Yeah. I saw the bug just started to move, and that's damage right there. Uh, okay, no one else is in this room. Good. Wanted to make sure that uh, I wasn't really possible of keeping the greed timer going. Well, actually, hang on. Maybe I was. Because, yeah, there's no more enemies in this room. But maybe I would have found an enemy quickly enough in one of these rooms to keep the greed timer going. Okay, so this is a trap room that taunted us last time, but we've already learned the trick of it. The trick is literally just remember that you have a roll. Alright. I mean, that's pretty effective, right? Just shield bashing constantly. Whoa! Almost. Yeah, that's pretty wildly effective. All right, a two-handed weapon for us is the Titan Slayer. Uh, deals critical damage against elites, champions, and bosses. That's going to be pretty important because not only do I have, you know, the champion at the end of this area, there's also elite enemies in the next area, which are just enemies that basically have twice the health bar and attack a little bit faster. There might be other changes as well. I don't necessarily understand them all in the fullness at the moment. Alright. Plus 15% damage against weakened enemies, so that's kind of incentivizing me parrying a little bit more. Alright, that's another entrance to this area that's already gone down. Fine. I mean, I'm still very keen on trying to learn to parry in this run. Oh, we can break their defense with the the shield bash? Oh, that's actually incredible. That really, really changes how I combat these rooms. Each greed kill removes one corruption. 
Okay. Yeah, we need to make sure that we're constantly in greed then. That's actually really good because it changes the amount of rooms that I have to clear. Because, right, rooms give you increments of 20 corruption. And if you hit 100, you gain a curse, right? So if I manage to lose even one corruption, I stave off a curse for a whole extra room. Every 20 corruption I remove staves it off for an extra room past that. It's also really, really good to, that to counter with this. Counter, sorry. To combo, excuse me, with this, I have greed time is extended as well. Unfortunately, I do want to go over this way. Wait, no, I can continue the green timer. Nice. Oh, he almost got me, bud. Now you can see I stop attacking. No! Woo! <laughs> That's a perfect roll. I stop attacking as soon as I only have one pip left of stamina. Right, and then this is a poison area that I have to use that to blow it up so I can actually access it. Nice. Without taking damage. But yeah, I always try and make sure that... Uh, baiting with an offhand combo for the resource stamina to shiv. No, I'm fine. Thanks. Okay. I should learn to stay there, be a little bit more patient. But I always try and make sure that I have one pip of stamina left as I, uh, as I stop comboing the enemy. So that if they suddenly respond, I can suddenly roll away as well. Effectively, I'm just leaving myself space to panic dodge. Alright. Let's wait for those to burn. I wonder if I could go through. Okay, never mind. I'm not going to get to test that right now. Actually, I can! Okay, cool! I can just go straight through them with the shield. Good to see. Should help us keep the clear pace up. Yeah, because these don't really track at all, you can kind of just <laughs> walk straight through them. All right. Ooh, almost got caught by a trap. <laughs> almost jumped into a corruption attack there. Quickly, the hell away from all of that. Oh, I love just... Okay, I actually think I've solved what the value of the shield and shield bash is here. Not only is it actually like a pretty good weapon, you know, depending on the level of your other weapons, depending on the buffs you have for it and stuff like that, uh, but also it really well positions your enemies. So you can see there that I managed to knock them all pretty much just into traps that then finish them off for me, and I still get the greed effect from that, so... Sounds good to me. I'm not gonna be taking that spear. At the moment, I think the Titan Slayer is... my best weapon for combating the bosses, and that would replace my weapon for combating the bosses to make me better in what? Rooms? I'm already really good in rooms. Get bullied. There we go. I mean, there's also a sec. Whoa! <laughs> Almost. There's also a secondary reason that the shield bash is so great. Is that it very, very natively target. Ah, yeah, got me. Very natively targets multiple enemies at the same time. I kind of want to try and combo him. Sorry, combo. Uh, counter? Parry? There we go. Kind of want to try and parry him, but also I recognize that trying that and failing is a bad idea. Ceremonial dagger is plus 20% base damage if the main weapon is a mace. No, but 3% extra base damage per point of perception. Here's another shield. 
plus 15% to damage whilst in the light. Offhand combos deal critical damage. I very rarely use offhand combos. Uh, it does have a 25% chance to automatically trigger a parry, as well as a 20% chance to inflict poison damage. And then finally, there is the Swift Bow, which is kills increasing your movement speed for 5 seconds, plus 1% base damage per point of constitution, and plus 20% base damage against unin uh, uninjured enemies. Hmm. I like the Whispering Aegis here, actually. Solid upgrade on the shield that I already have, which has definitely proven to be my main weapon. Unfortunately, we're going to have to drop the blazing shields on the ground. Let's get out of here. Is this anything? No? I'm trying to figure out what aspects of the environment are, you know, secrets and stuff like that. Because I know that many roguelikes like this, roguelites rather, have things that are a little bit niche off to the side that you're supposed to understand, but a little bit later on. And it's impossible for me to walk through these rooms without thinking, hmm, that's a weird formation of rocks. Maybe that's a maybe that's a secret for something. I'm just so trained by other games to keep an eye out for that. Like here. That seems unique. Another body that I get to burn? What is do I burn a bunch of bodies and then some Exactly. Like that that is the the mental stuff that's going on behind the scenes constantly as soon as I see elements like this in games like this. Okay. Hi! Ta -ta -ta. Okay. Unfortunately, the whole... Whoa! That, that is a claw! Claw? Critical uh, deals critical damage to enemies under 30% health, but it also does have the plus 20% to its base damage. Courtesy of the... Nice. Courtesy of my relic. Okay. Nowhere else around here. Let's get out of here. Wait, would I have actually had the speed if I left instantly to get into another combat? Uh, I don't think so, but maybe. That was an example of not leaving myself with extra space to dodge away, but thankfully gaining some stamina back by killing an enemy. This one, never mind. That's the end of the area, so of course I'm not gonna have another one to go into. Uh, so yeah, usually at this point, because we are what two spaces below the champion, I would no longer go for plus twenty five percent to gold find. But now, definitely, of course I will. There's a whole nother floor after this. All right, I'm gonna go for stats again. Our main hand weapon really needs to be better. Uh, ideally, what would it be? Because when you're using your secondary weapon, the Whispering Aegis, the shield, you still have your main hand weapon out. That is to say, the Claws of Visceration in this case. So if instead I got a weapon that said, you know, plus 20% damage if you have a shield as your secondary weapon, as well as provides passive illumination, then I would always be in the light for the sake of the Whispering Aegis. Another body to burn. See? See? Starting to feel like elements that uh, could come together in some sort of a secret, right? At the moment, I'm just going to try and turn the lights on for some of these rooms. Da -da -da -da. Oh, what? Okay, that actually still got me. Nice. Thought I was far enough away from that, but... Evidently? Uh-uh. Not the case. Alright. I really want to see the stats that I get at the end of this. Ideally, I just want some decks. I want more damage. Hmm. 
It'd also be nice if there was some sort of a relic that said something like, uh, you know, knocking enemies into walls deals 50% of weapon damage or something like that. Because by default, that's what I try and do with a bash. Da -da -da, almost. That's what I try and do with a bash by default. Ah, okay. Here I get to demonstrate something actually really cool. First, let me just destroy that. And this too. Let me get that skull. Okay. The Titan Slayer is a heavy weapon. And it has a heavy attack that can actually go through here. It looks like half of the value is this, uh, of this room. Ooh, another perception? Um, hmm. Over which? Probably over plus 15% damage against weakened enemies. Not really weakening my enemies constantly here. But it seems like a lot of the value of that room is actually just that it gives you a huge increase on your greed timer if you actually go into it, right? Not your greed timer, but your greed stacks. Eh, okay, it's 10% damage and 25% gold mine again, but... I'm still game. Alright, champion. We're going in with about half HP. We haven't visited a single haven this entire time. We only have one curse, so I know you're going to clear that curse when we finish the match. Uh-oh. Oh, this weapon is very slow. I may not have accounted for that. Yeah, not only is it very slow, you can't animation cancel halfway through the biggest attack. Uh, yeah, this might just be a use the main weapon kind of situation instead. Like, the damage actually isn't even that different. The only problem with the main weapon is it requires that I get up close and personal with an enemy that specifically I should not do that against. Yeah, because then stuff like that happens. So I think what I'm going to have to do is exactly, yeah, exactly what I'm doing at the moment, which is, hang on, dash in, roll out. Okay, trying to go straight through and just persist through the attacks? Not a great idea. It's not like it's costing me a ridiculous amount of HP, but... I'd rather get best practices set in now, you know? Ah, da, 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 da. No more corruption, please. No! Oh, that is the absolute worst. That's exactly, exactly why I kept saying... I have to be able to get in and get out! Ryan! Why do you get so greedy despite saying the right things? You do the wrong things. Alright. That ended up costing me 300 health and a lot more corruption than I really wanted it to. However, we do cure a curse. Wait, hang on. Oh, it's plus 15% damage in the light, not is extra light. That's okay. I still want the Slaver's Mace here, I think. Then Duel of Shiv. No, my main weapon's not a sword. And also, I really like the, the Aegis here. All right. Unfortunately, we're about to pick up just another curse right now. I do want to leave path for a, a haven at the end. So I'm going to take this and then probably ride over to the right. Auric Malediction. Health loss is reduced by 25% and you lose as much gold as you take damage. The first one that I jumped over was Blurred Vision, uh, which was literally just parts of the map are obscured, but we instantly cured it. So parts of the map are no longer obscured. Yeah, I'll go to maximum. This area could be pretty harsh. Really depends on how many champions I fight and exactly how cocky I get fighting them. 
Uh oh. Uh oh. Yep, you can see that health bar? That is a champion's health bar. Okay. I mean, they acted very, very passive that entire time. Much appreciated for doing so. Just... No? Okay. Again, just keeping an eye out for those secrets. Okay. Oftentimes it serves me well. Just not always. Uh, huh? Nope. Okay. It'll happen. Whoa! Okay, that necromancer enemy in the middle there. It's kind of terrifying. Managed to do a double strike very quick that I really had nothing I could do about. Well, because I didn't know that the second strike was coming out, I had nothing I could do about it. Not, not because it's actually uncounterable. I don't mean to make that claim. It's more the second attack I didn't know was about to happen and also has very good tracking. So without like leaving myself with extra stamina for a second panic roll, there's not much I can do about it at that specific point in time. That looks like a broken wall. Hey! <laughs> See? Sometimes it serves me well. Plus 20% damage for <laughs> base damage to daggers and 2 perception. I actually don't want that. Don't want to replace any of my relics with that. Uh, I, I probably will, at this rate, end up carrying the shield along until the end of this run. Not a perfectly timed dodge. Okay. Ah! Poison! That's my bad. I'm also going to have to kind of like further understand these rooms. So I know which have poison in what areas they have them. Because that doesn't seem to change too much. Despite the fact that you need the torch to reveal where the poison is. Same with spike traps. Well, you don't necessarily need the torch. To Ooh, each greed kill removes another corruption. I like it. I like it. I'm going to get rid of the claws modifier, I think, here. Oh, good lord! They teleport behind you! Okay, so roll through that attack, right? No, no, no! Thank you for the instant parry there. But yes, uh, you don't need specifically the torch to reveal traps. They just have to be in light. So if you're in a dark area, you really want to hold the torch out just so you're aware of the traps. Do I go... Do I go to an unknown? Yeah, I'll have enough opportunities to spend money later. I might as well go to an unknown now. Oh, it's a haven! Oh, nice! That's actually really, really good. Let's pick up a another curse. But that's really good because it means I can dodge the later haven, get money instead, go for another relic. Or maybe even cut off to the left and then get a new weapon before the final boss. I'd really like an upgrade to my two-handed weapon. My Titan Slayer really isn't cutting it at the moment. Dark Mysteries. There are some things that must be lived to be understood. Other curses are unknown for as long as this one is not lifted. So I know my first is Auric Malediction. Right? Is it hiding that? Yeah, it is hiding that. So I know that my first is Auric Malediction. Ooh. Who are you? 
instantly destroyed my ability to stay in the light. Okay, so it looks like a ranged enemy that flies up in the air as an evasive maneuver. Okay, and throws kind of like boomerang-like things at you. Got it. I really, really, really need to explode all of the poison in these areas. Because I haven't done so, I keep getting caught by it. And because I keep getting caught by it, I keep killing my own greed timers. And because I keep killing my own greed timers, I'm no longer actually getting rid of corruption as much as I would like. The knock-on effects are wild. Keep him going. Okay, breaking those gems did nothing. But again, still gotta check. At least the first time. Ah, oh, yeah, that was way too early. As soon as I committed to the roll, I was like, eh, yeah, this, this one's early. This one's my bad. The secondary effect of the shield is it seems like the shield bash doesn't counter, but it seems to interrupt a lot of attacks. Okay. I'm gonna try and get out of here and get into a battle in the next room as quickly as possible. No! Almost! That was almost fast enough. It was so close. Okay. okay, I should definitely be abusing this against the Necromancer. Because it really seems to interrupt their abilities. Uh, plus six of dex, that's a lot of max. I'm gonna start getting rid of Perception. It's pretty late to be keeping the gold find. Okay, plus 15% to critical damage, as well as five decks. Enemy attacks deal 50% less corruption, or heal 6% of max health whenever an enemy is killed by the environment. That is a lot of health for us. But it also requires us to get 70 corruption in order to take it, because I can't actually pay for it straight up. So I think I'm instead just going to go for the 15% critical damage and the decks. It's a little bit of a safer option, and it also leaves us with money to still buy another relic later if I should want to instead. We don't really have many relics or weapons or anything that's kind of keeping us up against attrition. Which is one concern of mine. We die to attrition pretty easily. You got plus 15% damage to poison attacks? I occasionally poison, actually. 20% chance to poison with my shield. I think it might be time to give up the greed kill time limit. While it hurts to do so, I think we're not really going to be removing that much more corruption with it later anyway. On. Hey, nice. Just wanted to get the easiest enemy to kill down first. Simplifying the rest of the fight for us. Okay, I can't just rely on constantly breaking their attacks. But God, it's good. Ah, that's unfortunate. Good tracking on that attack, big boy. 
you, you... Micromancer? How's that? Like, Sorcerer of the Mushroom Arts? Wait a second, no, there is a codex. Someone told me, yeah, there's there's not just a codex, but there's actually a bestiary in here as well. So I should be able to refer to them by their actual names. Okay, Serpent Cultists. Uh, plague Bringers. Okay, Plague Bringers makes sense. Vermins are the small ones. Prophetesses. Okay, so that's what I was saying, the necromancers. So Prophetesses. Tomb Horrors are the giant ones, got it. Titan Skulls, the ones we just started facing, and Zucat the Witch is the champion we fought just before that. Nice. It seems like in order to get more information about each of them, I have certain different challenges I have to complete. We'll uh, focus more on that later. Uh, okay, so there's two exits to this room. There's off left and there's up. I'm gonna just go off left. I have no good reasoning for or against left or the other direction. So I might as well just choose one of them pretty quickly and then move from there. Okay, so that's an elite plague bringer. Oh, and the elite plague bringer does summon elite vermin. Excellent. Also going to quickly do this. Hey, got him. Get got. All right. Extra chest worth of value, plus 20%, 200% uh, to agree time limit, as well as two, cor sorry, not corruption, constitution. Again, I really don't think I need it. We have, what, two more rooms left? I am really, really starting to show wear and tear from the attrition, though. Really starting to. Okay, so these are the prophetesses, right? Right, they're buffing the plague bringers. They also heal them. And they're not bad at defending themselves. Ah, oh, good lord! Instantly teleported behind me and took a shot. Oh, I know what it is. That was kind of like a... Like a parry stance, if you want to call it that. Charge attacks strike three times in a line behind the point of impact and plus 1% base damage per... Constitution. It's still more damage than our current weapon. Just because it's a second level weapon versus a level one weapon. I, I guess I hope that this is a haven. It's not. Oof. I really hope I can find some healing in here then. Or at the absolute least that I don't lose too much health here. Boom! I mean, it's okay, I guess? So yeah, I think what was happening before is they have a kind of parry stance, which is if you hit me while I'm in this stance, you take the damage. Uh, yeah. This is definitely big enough to open any secret area. That way, no. Wait, hang on. That might be a breakable door. Okay, cool. Never mind. We get to explore this one first anyway. Plus 2% of max health whenever an enemy is killed by the environment instead. Uh, I like that. I'm going to take that over the greed kills at the moment. Because I'm probably not going to get another level of curse before the end of the run. Probably. Ebony, even if I do, I don't think that 
specific relic would have been enough to stop it. Okay. Yeah, I was about to say, there should definitely be more enemies in this room. Let me just... No! Do you even have the ability to get away from that? I'm just quickly... Light the torch in this room so that it can wail on you with extra damage. Stonebreaker. This one has... Plus one percent. Plus one percent base damage per point of dex as well as uh, restore max health for environment enemy kills. Gonna love that. I wonder... Like, it says plus 1% of max health for each enemy. Oh, just for each enemy killed. It wasn't for each environment killed. Got it. I was about to say, how does it know? Like, if I use this weapon to get them in the placement for the environment kill. It doesn't. However, we now have a very, very strong incentive to use specifically this weapon for as many enemies as I can get away with. Okay, cool. Just let them exhaust that attack, run away, and then come back and hit them afterwards. Got it. Plus 20% base damage to spheres and plus two decks. Uh, I'm not on the weapon path yet. Okay, so I'm probably not going to find a spear. Should be able to buy basically any relic, though. And yeah, I'm going to have to use this weapon to try and heal up. Hopefully we find a lot of vermin in this area, because not vermin that gets summoned by plague bringers, but loose vermin. Because that would be a really good way to just suddenly get a bunch of extra health. Okay, I can see the enemies waiting up in the dark. I'm going to ambush them. Oh, get ambushed. And again. We know that stance. That's the hit me and die stance. All right. uh, I should take out one of them and then, yeah, then light the light. Okay, that sucked. Uh, yeah, when the enemies throw their uh their blades out. Run the hell away. That's it. It's just get the hell away from them. Because that all absolutely sucked. I kind of thought that I was just going to jump straight by them. Whoa! No! Am I actually just going to get killed by the poison here instead? No, it's not better than my current weapon. I just lost a lot of health to get it. Well, I need to find a lot of enemies to kill with this mace so that I can actually get some health before we go to the boss. And somehow I feel like I'm not going to get the opportunity. Somehow, I figure we're not going to get the opportunity. Ugh. Regardless, we learnt a hell of a lot in that run. But even more than that, we picked up 40 Crystal Skulls. That is going to be huge for what we get to do out here in the meta level. Awesome. So, available options whenever an enemy is set on fire is a 50% chance to be weakened for a short duration, no effect on bosses. Uh, brutal Temper, killing multiple enemies within one second activates Fury for 50% more damage for six seconds. That's actually quite good for us. Uh, what's this? When attacking, you take 20% less, less damage and <laughs> damage not interrupt you. Okay, yeah, that would work really well. Uh, trap Seal, 100% more damage to enemies. 1,000 gold at the start of your exploration could be pretty good as well. Uh, Blood Fountains give 300 gold per usage. Perfect Dodge triggers Haste. 
which is just faster movement speed for five seconds. Uh, successful parries fully restore stamina and five constitution at the start of your exploration, as well as gain fury, 5%, uh, 50% more damage rather for six seconds whenever you take damage. Uh, I'm going to go with Brutal Temper. I think that's actually really, really... Wait, hang on. There's also this option over here, Divine Favor. Each favor allows you to refresh the choice of items in weapons or relic shrines. I'm going to get three levels of that, actually. Then I'll also go for Furious Skin instead. So now every run, I will have three different times where I see the weapon or relic shrines, and I can just re-roll the options that are given to me. So I will have much more control over my builds. Which I figure is probably going to be what is needed for us to overcome the Abomination's Lair in the Serpent Temple, the major update for Curse of the Dead Gods. Again, you can buy Curse of the Dead Gods at the link at the top of the description down below. Thank you to Focus Home Interactive again for sponsoring this series. The game is also 20% off on Steam until July 9th. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. My name is Rhapsody. There's a playlist in the description down below with all my content on this game, past, present, and future, and hopefully we'll see you next time.